arms, and though some of them are uh, cartoonish and stylistically done, uh, there's no question as to what we're looking at. Here's the Stegosaurus. This is another one, but a different artist did this one in a totally different style. Again, one after another, you see <laughs> unquestionable resemblance. Many of them uh, were in the form of pendants. Uh, with a hole in the center they wore around their neck, again lending credibility to the idea these were to scare off the evil spirits, uh, but we saw literally dozens of these, and many of the figures of the people could be seen with these pendants uh, sculpted in, in the figuring. Man with dinosaur, how do you <laughs> avoid the conclusion? Many of them are seen fighting. Sometimes the man's getting the best of the fight, and sometimes the dinosaur, and usually with smaller ones, uh, we would assume more juvenile forms. Here the, the dinosaur is getting the best of him. Uh, many times with the, the juvenile forms, as you can see, some of them still uh, showing uh, some ferocity even as juveniles. But uh, the depiction of them fighting together, here the dinosaur getting the best, and here the man getting the best shows the kind of conflict that very likely was going on at this time. Here's one with a spear in his neck, but uh, very closely resembling uh, our modern knowledge of what dinosaurs look like. Uh, this one is my wife's favorite. <laughs> um, we could go on and on and on, 2,600 of them. On a recent trip to Mexico, we made additional discoveries here at the foot of El Toro. Actually, we didn't do the digging, but this was done by an individual who was digging clay for bricks. He has his own brick factory and permits to uh, take clay from this area, right at the foot of El Toro, not far from where Jules Rudd had done his excavations. And he showed us a number of the beautiful vases and figures that he had gotten from the area. And uh, one of them was extremely interesting, uh, this dinosaur type creature is very similar to the Bullosaurus, depicted here by Romer, uh, a, a very obvious similarity, but again, the dermal frills along the back are typical of the, uh, the dinosaur type, and uh, a number like this were found, and this was done, of course, uh, in, in the, about the year 2000. 2002, 2003, uh, continuing the excavation, he continues to find these long, long after Jules Rudd, of course, has passed away. They continue to be excavated in spite of uh, Ina's strong effort to keep us from doing that. We can't or uh, we would be in jail because we don't have the permits. But he did have a permit to get them for his brick factory or at least to get the clay. Now then, these uh, figurines are housed in the Waldemar Yulsrud Museum there in Acombro. When we arrived on the scene, they were locked in the back of the police department. <laughs> uh, as we began to tell them the significance and began to present the evidence and show how they had been verified uh, from, from various sources, they decided this was significant information, and in spite of Ina's opposition, they put up a museum, and they're very prominently and, and uh, very professionally displayed, and you can go to a Combro and see these and hear the story of Waldemar Yulsrud and see some of the pictures that we've shown you. Uh, we see the director of the museum today on the left, uh, together with the wife of an archaeologist who has helped us there. Dr. Swift and myself in front of the museum in a picture taken, res taken recently. Now, let's summarize the evidence. There is the radiometric dating, which helps us understand, especially with a variety of examples for a few thousand years. Uh, radiocarbon first, uh, according to Hapgood, some three to six thousand years, and then thermoluminescent dating that was consistently at about 4,000 years, or 2,500 B.C. And then also uh, a recent radiocarbon dating was done by Neil Steedy, which indicated 1.5 to 4,000, uh, a range. Uh, but still, if you have it more than 200 years, <laughs> again, you have uh, the, the destruction of the story that's told in the textbooks. Looking at the witnesses and summarizing, there's Waldemar Yulsrud, who was co-discoverer of the Chipicaro culture, 
collected over 37,000 artifacts, wrote the book, Enigmas del Pasado, or uh, Mysteries of the Past. Carlos Ulsrud, his son, who also described excavating dinosaurs with his father, and then the grandson, Carlos Ulsrud, who described excavating dinosaurs with his grandfather, and recorded that testimony beside his grandfather's tomb and showed us examples that he'd excavated. There is Dr. Hineon, physician Guadalajara, that described his excavations with Yules Rudd as a youth and sketched some of the dinosaurs that he found. There is Mr. Espinoza, who is an accountant, uh, who personally took us to the site where he had excavated and also sketched dinosaurs that he had found. There is per, uh, Carlos Perea, who was former director of archaeology of the Acomoro Zone of the National Museum of Anthropology, who described excavations with Ramon Pena Chan, uh, dinosaurs and humans together. And then there's Charles Hapgood, professor of history of anthropology, University of New Hampshire. He excavated dinosaur figurines under roads, uh, helped excavate under the house of the police chief and uh, under walls, stone walls that had been there for hundreds of years, and wrote the book, Mystery of Acombro, detailing his investigation. Uh, together with Earl Stanley Gardner, the famous author of Perry Mason, a criminologist, a district attorney uh, in the Los Angeles area for 30 years, uh, proved, I think beyond any shadow of a doubt, he certainly claimed so, uh, that the figurines predated Yules Rudd beyond any shadow of a doubt. And then there's the mayor of Acombro, uh, who worked together with Earl Stanley Gardner and conducted his own three-month investigation for fraud, trying to find anyone who had might know, knew anything about manufacturing these things and allowed the excavation under his floor. There's Mr. Marinas, number 10, <laughs> who was the chief of federal police. Uh, Guadalajara confiscated uh, over 3,000 of these figurines from two who were excavating illegally. Uh, including dinosaurs in the collection and sketched those for us. Now that's a huge collection of witnesses. If you were in court trying to refute the testimony of such individuals, you'd be in serious trouble. There's Waldemar Yulsrud, there's Carlos the son, there is again Carlos the grandson, there's Dr. Hineon, there is the accountant Mr. Espinoza, there's Carlos Perea, the director of the Acombro Zone for the National Museum, there's Charles Hapgood at the University of New Hampshire, there's Earl Stanley Gardner, author of Perry Mason, the mayor of the city, and then the chief of the federal police. That's an impressive array of witnesses and they all testify to the authenticity of these figurines that Jules Rudd certainly was not the author, they were there long before he was. I think the conclusion is absolutely inescapable that humans and dinosaurs live together. The only opposition, the only problem, the only reason that's not just really obvious and accepted without question is the philosophical implication. Nova did an investigation of some of this material, produced the brief uh, video, God, Darwin, and the Dinosaurs, in which they discussed the subject, dinosaurs side by side with humans, particularly with reference to the evidence at Glen Rose, Texas. But they showed clearly the implications, saying finding them would counter evidence that humans evolved long after dinosaurs became extinct. Now that's the fundamental conclusion that they will deny and will not accept and back up the claim that all species, including man, were created at one time. Now that's the significance, according to NOVA, and I think they're absolutely correct. That's why many refuse to accept the obvious implications. I think we ought to be honest and just follow the evidence where it leads. That's good science, that's good archaeology, and uh, that's what we ought to believe.